In this video, we're going to take a look at replacing the TPS sensor, making tests and adjustments. This video is in discussion for DTC code P0121, P0122, and P0123, also P0510. Component Description The throttle position sensor responds to the accelerator pedal movement. This sensor is a kind of potentiometer which transforms the throttle position into output voltage and emit the voltage signal to the ECM, electronic control module. In addition, the sensor detects the opening and closing speed of the throttle valve and send that voltage to the ECM for signal. Idle position of the throttle valve is determined by the ECM receiving the signal from the throttle position sensor. The sensor control engine operations such as fuel cut. On the other hand, the wide open and closed throttle position switch which is built in to the throttle position sensor unit is not used for engine control. Note, if DTC P0121 is displayed with DTC code P0510, first perform the troubleshoot diagnostic for DTC P0510. So what needs to be understand here is that the top the top plug which is silver gray is not used for the ECM communication. Instead the brown plug with the three wire is directly for ECM throttle idle control. This orange wire with the black stripe on pin number six. This wire is the open throttle position for the sensor and the other two wire which is the pink wire, the pink stripe wire, or I should say the black wire with the pink stripe and the brown wire with the white stripe are on the closed throttle position circuit. So that you're going to have to pay attention to because what you need to know is that on this orange wire with the black stripe is for throttling and shifting the transmission while this brown wire with the white stripe and the black wire with the pink stripe is for controlling the EVAP purge solenoid. On the top plug which is the wide open throttle and closed throttle switch you're going to notice three wires the top wire which is a brown wire with a white stripe goes to ECU pin number 28 and is communicated with terminal number 4 on the TPS. The next wire is a black wire with a pink stripe and that wire goes to ECM relay pin number 3 also the ECM electronic control module unit pin number 117, 67, and 72. This black and pink stripe wire communicate with terminal number 5 on the TPS. The orange wire with the black stripe, which is on pin terminal number 6 for the TPS, goes to the automatic transmission control module and is for shifting and controlling the automatic transmission based on throttle position. If you pay close attention to the pink stripe black wire, you will notice that same wire is designated on the EVAP purge solenoid. So what that tells us is when the throttle position is enclosed, it will most likely activate the EVAP purge solenoid for evacuating gasoline vapor out of the gas tank. 
when we take a look at the TPS sensor part of the component this is where you're going to need to make your adjustment for engine idle and performance we could see on pin number one which is a brown wire and that goes to ECU or ECM pin number 43 in the middle is a blue wire and that's on TPS pin terminal number two and this goes to ECM pin number 23 this blue wire becomes a shield wire inside the wiring harness so you have to pay attention to that the last terminal which is three is a black and white wire and this goes to ECM pin number 42 this is a 5 volt reference signal from the ECU and the blue wire is a signal position of the throttle position valve for the ECU while terminal number one with the brown wire is a ground in the ECU so what we have here is all three wires on this TPS communicate with the ECU. Now when pulling on the plug for disconnecting, you always want to make sure you remain grip on the plug socket and never pull on the wire for disconnecting it because this could lead the wire to disconnect from its metal pin inside the socket and this will cause a faulty connection to the TPS. So you will use the recommended tool for removing your defective or malfunction TPS. In most cases, you will most likely use a Phillips screwdriver, a flathead screwdriver, or sometime an eight millimeter socket now when you're removing these screws you have to be careful because you can see it has the potential of falling down into the engine valley so you always have to keep a hand on them and place them in a safe area where they could be retrieved later on now it's always best to place some lubricant on these threads when you're going to be reinstalling your new TPS so we just want to clip this out of position and take a look at the back. Now this is the part that moves when the throttle blade is moving. And then it will be able to give that signal on the blue wire. So what we have to do now, we have to test our TPS and we want to perform a test on the wiring harness to make sure that we are getting continuity and signal. Now the first wire I want to locate is this brown wire and the black wire with a white stripe. And what I want to do, I want to test these two pins with my multi-volt meter to see if an approximate of 5 volt exists. To make sure a safe connection is being made, we want to use a setup like this for placing it into the pin instead of having to push the probe into the pin socket expanding its position and weakening its connection to the TPS we always want to use a lead a test lead wire connecting to the probe so with the ignition switch on we will now look for a voltage of approximately 5.5 this is what the ECU is sending inside the TPS sensor on its metering board now what you need to understand here is that the blue wire is a signal wire that moves a point on that metering board between 0 to 5 volts and it records that position to the ECU so the testing for the blue wire will have to be done when the TPS is connected and this we will show you later on in the video 
Our next test is pin number five and pin number four on the TPS switch for transmission control and EVAP purge. With the ignition switch placed off for changing our connection, we want to connect our probe to the pink stripe wire, the black with the pink stripe wire, and to the ground looking for a battery volt. So here we can see we have a battery volt on the negative side, but that doesn't mean that's an issue. We just have to ch change the probe around, and we can see we have a battery volt showing. So this means that the circuit for power distribution on the TPS is in function. Now we will perform a test with our probe connected to the black wire with the pink stripe and the orange wire with the black stripe. And what we want to see again is battery voltage. So this is telling us that the orange wire with the black stripe is a ground for inside the ECU. Let's take another test with the black wire and the pink stripe against the brown wire and also it could be a brown wire with a white stripe and what we want to see is battery continuity. So that tell us the circuit in the TPS wide open and closed throttle position switch is functioning and so is the throttle position sensoring device for the ECU. Now let's look at replacing the TPS and making the necessary adjustments that's required for engine performance, idle control, and transmission proper shifting. Before we could replace that sensor, you want to make sure you use some CRC, placing it where the bolts go. And this is going to give you some lubrication because remember, this is aluminum and you're putting a steel bolt into the threads. So you could have a likeliness of creating a strip or damaged thread condition. Now, what I'm going to also tell you about this throttle body is that you're going to want to disconnect this duct and inside on the sides of the butterfly where the shaft goes into the body. You're going to want to place some lubricant on, on those area for preventing the throttle body from becoming damaged by opening back and forth. You could create excess wear where the shaft meets the bore and this could leak air into the engine to cause a vacuum leak. So that's something you're going to have to look at. To receive an air leak from that shaft and the throttle body, the engine will probably have to exceed over 600, 700,000 miles on the odometer. Let's talk about positioning of this throttle position sensor. As you can see, this is a Hitachi and this is equipped on the Nissan VG33E engine for the Frontier and Pathfinder. So it's going to have to be placed like this, even though you see the writing like this, you're going to have to remember the position and location where you remove your sensor from. Now, when we removed the sensor, we wasn't able to see the position of this arm in its relation with that shaft. So we know this arm has to move clockwise. And when we look at the throttle, we could see it's moving counterclockwise. So we want to make sure that the front of this pin is on the back of this arm when installing. Now, we could take a test on the blue wire for this TPS. If we were to place it in position with our test probe wire connected to the blue and ground, so let's get that going right now. What needs to be done here is we need to place our positive probe into this socket. So we want to pass it around the rear, flipping it around, place it into the pin, make sure it does not fray it out into any other pin that's located next to it. Now that we have that connected, we could reconnect the TPS and all our testing is going to be made at the end of this probe. Like I said before, 
You don't want to be sticking that probe in the back of the wire here where it's connected to the metal terminal because that's going to cause damage. Now that you see how we made that connection, this connection for the negative probe on the meter will go to the ground. And then we're going to activate the switch looking for a voltage on the multivolt meter looking for a smooth reading. This is going to designate that we have a properly function TPS sensor. If we should see any breakage or in large increase and decrease, it will mean that the TPS sensor circuit board is damaged internally and it will need replacement. With the ignition key on, I just want to set the voltage and I'm going to hold this negative cable to the ground so we could see we're already registering on the negative side of the voltage. So like I said before, I just have to switch the probe around and it will read correct. Now I, we can see we have 0 0.03. Now as I move this, we can see we're getting a nice and smooth increase all the way to approximately 5 volts. And that will be wide open throttle. This will be half throttle. 250, 2.5 will be half throttle. Now our closed throttle is 0 0.03, 0 0.04 volts. Now that's not a good voltage for starting this engine because this engine require a voltage of approximately 0 0.15 to approximately 0 0.85 volts. So that's the voltage we want to see on the screen when the ignition key is on for this blue wire signal to make the engine operate and perform like the factory intended it to. So what we want to do right now is we want to make sure we remove the ignition key and the switch is off. We're going to disconnect our sensor, remove the probe which has confirmed for us that the sensor is in good working condition and so is the circuit. So like we have discussed before, you want to make sure you place this arm in front of the pin so it's going to require you for placing the TPS in on an angle like that and then you're going to have to swing it into position. You just don't want to drop it directly over the screw hole. You want to just go a little 20 degrees off from the angle and we'll place that in position. Here's what you need to know. You see this bottom screw that has to go into the TPS? You're going to have to be very careful with it because you're most likely to lose it by dropping it down into the engine. So make sure you use both hands, all four of your fingers, and try to catch the threads before you should use the screw onto it. Very important that you place some lubricant on the thread of the screw when you're going to be hand install them first. You do not want to use the tool for installing these screws because if you mess them up then every time you step on the throttle the TPS is going to move with the throttle blade and this is going to cause problem driving the vehicle and maintaining control. This sensor must remain fixed and stationary to the throttle body. It must not be able to move it must not be broken or have any leaks or water into it or warp or twisted because this will lead to malfunction and failure during the course of driving. So what I'm doing here is I'm installing that test lead again into where the blue wire is because this is how we're going to make our adjustment on the TPS. Now once we have that connection in there, so we only have one wire, we don't have to worry about it touching anything, you just don't want to make sure. It cross over into another pin because if it should cross over into another pin, then you could burn the ECU driver and that will mean you need a new ECU. So we have made our connection, we'll replace the plug. So we're only going to place the sensing element plug, which is the bottom one. And we're going to look for a signal between 0 0.15 to 
and 0 0.85 volts. Now we must turn the ignition key on. With the ignition key on, I just want to turn the voltmeter on. Place our test probe to the ground. And I could see my TPS right now is holding at approximately 0 0.2 volts. So if I was to move the TPS, you see how the voltage changes? So that will be our absolutely close position. Now as I go down on it, the voltage will increase. And that's a maximum of, well we could say 0.9 volts. But we don't want it that high. We want it approximately half of that. We want about a 0.46. Now that we have 0.46 set, we just want to tighten these screws. Now tightening these screws are going to confirm that your setting is final because you still have to take a, another test and that will simply be with just touching the ground. So we can see we have 0 0.46 which is what we wanted. Now if we should increase the throttle we want to see that volt climb to approximately 4.85 5 volts because 5 volts 4.3.9 3.6 so this is open throttle and that will be closed throttle for idle so that's how you set your TPS now we will turn the key off to make our disconnection you want never want to connect and disconnect your test lead and probe while the ignition key is on or when the circuit is alive with the ignition key off we can now disconnect this TPS sensor, get this test probe out of here, reconnect it, remove all your test tube. Now let's start the engine and see the idle quality and then it will have to be taken for a test drive to make sure that the transmission shifts. So this is that cold operation. Now you might see the engine RPM rises above 1500 and it may not drop. So what you might have to do is turn the ignition off, wait a few seconds. You could also disconnect that negative battery cable for a few minutes and reconnecting. Then we're gonna try it with another start. So we have to take consideration with the temperature, which is already out of the cool. So once that temperature gets into the median, this idle should be able to drop to approximately 800. With the ECU reset by disconnecting and reconnecting the battery, let's take another start and see what happens with that RPM. And we also want to look at that coolant temperature sensor on the gauge. So there you go. You can see that's a normal startup. Engine started at a high RPM and instantly it dropped down to below 8,000 RPM. Now marginaling into its 800 RPM designated zone. And our temperature is just about in the median, which is exactly what we want. So that's how you adjust the throttle position sensor on the throttle body for controlling engine acceleration and RPM. Onboard Dianosis Logic DTC 0121.
Trouble diagnostic, name, throttle position, sensor circuit, range, performance problem. DTC detecting condition, a high voltage from the sensor is sent to the ECM under light load driving condition or a low voltage from the sensor is sent to the ECU under heavy load driving condition. Problem causes harness or connection. The TPS circuit is open or short. Also TPS sensor. Camshaft position sensor. Mass airflow sensor. Possible cause harness or connection. The TPS circuit is open or short. Intake air leak in the dock or failure to TPS sensor. Caution, do not use ECM ground terminal at the TPS when measuring input output voltage. Doing so may result in damage of the ECM transistor. Use a ground other than the ECM terminal such as a engine ground. Condition for setting TPS like we have shown before, terminal wire number 23 from the ECM color L which will be a blue, TPS signal data voltage is 0 0.15 to 0 0.85 volt with condition engine warm running range. Onboard diagnosis logic, DTC number P0122, trouble diagnosis name, throttle position sensor, low input. DTC detecting condition, an excessively low voltage from the sensor is sent to the ECM. DTC number P0123, trouble diagnosis name, throttle position sensor, high input, DTC detecting condition, an excessive high voltage from the sensor is sent to the ECM. Possible cause, harness connection or connectors. The TPS sensor itself might fail, circuit is open or short. When the malfunction is detected, the ECU enter fail safe mode and the check engine light or service engine soon light will display itself. When throttle position sensor circuit fail detect the engine operation condition in fail safe mode. The throttle position will be determined based on the injector fuel amount and engine speed. Therefore acceleration will be poor when driving, accelerating in normal when engine idle.